but witness to the fury of nature. <coughs> Powerful and unyielding. <coughs> but now, wait something else. Something even more inescapable. Because hell has a new name. <coughs> Potholes. They're here. excited here we're back on the air we dug out we're you know everybody here we're out of the house we're out we're back from the worst snow we've ever had unless you listen to those old cranks you know it was worse in 48 you know all those guys around <laughs> yeah much worse in 48 that's great grandpa but you know you didn't need to get to Starbucks in 48 all right <laughs> You didn't need to get to the deli section at QFC in 48. There wasn't. All anybody ate back then was Velveeta and saltines. You didn't need to get anywhere in 48. It was, I have to say, it was a lot of snow, but it was strange snow. You know, remember that night? If you watched it, it was all this powder. This flurries of powder came down, and it filled, you know, like a couple feet. And then it, ju it just turned to rain. I mean, just like, like that. And then it got all mixed in there, and it was like Seattle was one giant margarita. I mean, it, was, it was just like, you go out and look at it, and it was like that. And I never seen anything like it. It's like we were in a giant slushy, like a giant margarita, and then they salted the streets. So it was, per it was purple. The hardware stores were very entertaining. You know, I'm sure you all went through that. We're out of that. We're out of that. We don't have any more. Except at Ballard Hardware. Have you ever? <laughs> it's, I, it's a great place. I love it. But they have a very unique organizational method, if you've ever been there. Snow shovels. Uh, look under the oxygen masks. Are they... <laughs> OK, no, no, no. They're under the salmon row, the bottles of salmon row. Einer, Einer, where, where, where are the shovels? <laughs> ah, the hell with it. The hell with it. You know, but even with all that bad weather, you know, over a hundred, there's like a hundred, two hundred people made it down to apply for the city council seat. There's a vacant city council seat. They're all down there, and then the current council chooses the new council member, the person who's going to be sitting there with them. So I'm guessing they, you know, they see, you know, a few hundred people, and then they all go into a back room, and they're like, well, what about the lady in the blue hat? You know, no. Nah. <laughs> She's kind of nerdy. Well, the guy in the white suit, hell, no. Nah. It's sort of like, you know, fraternity rush. You know, they just, they, <laughs> Narrow it down to like, three people and have them put, you know, their underwear on the outside, run around. And... <laughs> you got to carry a brick for three weeks, you know, and then we'll say, you know, shave your head, then, you know, something like that. Anyway, uh, Bill Gates is on the cover of Time magazine this week. You might have seen it, The Private Life of Bill Gates. And in the story, they report that Bill and Melinda Gates have an agreement allowing him to visit an old girlfriend at her North Carolina beach cottage one weekend a year to, according to the article, to walk the beach, ride dune buggies, hang glide, and discuss biotechnology. For one weekend a year he does. The other 51 weekends out of the year he spends apologizing to Melinda. <laughs> I like that though, discussing biotechnology. I think that's a good idea, good line. Where were you? I was discussing biotechnology. <laughs> Have you been drinking? I was discussing biotechnology. <laughs> what happened to the car? I was discussing biotechnology. <laughs> Who is that in the back seat? I was discussing bio... <laughs> anyway, it's an interesting agreement. And we thought you might be interested in other agreements between Bill and Melinda Gates. We got a hold of their prenuptial agreement. It's on the internet. 
And uh, <laughs> this is what it says. For example, she gets to spend one weekend a year with David Duchovny at a travel lodge in Centralia. <laughs> After sex, he can no longer say, while we were doing it, I just made another $10 million. <laughs> a nice, we've got to be a nice feeling, you know, all the way around, actually. Melinda will uh, vacuum the upstairs 20,000 square feet. The Bill will do the downstairs 20,000 square feet. Whenever the baby needs a change, Bill must stop shouting, oh, look what Jennifer just downloaded. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's just part of the joys of parenthood. Is that, is that clock right? Oh boy, okay, uh, I'm supposed to be, I'll, I'm, I'll be right back, I'll be right back. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh. The thing is, when, when you go to start the truck, okay, pump it twice, but don't pump it any more than twice or you'll flood it, okay? And the, the left turn signal is out, so be careful when you're changing lanes and stuff. And uh, there's not a lot of gas in it, but uh, it'll get you to Olympia, you know. And the, uh, uh, the license tabs are expired, you know, but I, I, mean, I figured if you, know, if you got stopped, you, you could you know, deal with that. Wait, right. aren't you helping us move? Um, well, see, I... I'd, I'd really like to, you know, I mean, I, I plan to and everything, but I, I, got, I got this gig back at the station, and it's like my main gig, you know. Well, I, I can't, no, I, mean, I, I gotta I go. I thought you were no, helping no. us and, move. And, 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 I, I'm sorry, I, I gotta go. John! <laughs> What's going on here? God, gee, my knees. <laughs> all about that. I'm overcommitted, you know? I just gotta, gotta get organized here. All right, okay, where? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, Bill Gates' uh, prenuptial agreement. Where were we? The one of the, uh, just stop downloading. The, oh, yeah, and that's the other one. Uh, Thursday nights are reserved for making crank phone calls to their neighbor, Kenny G. <laughs> and finally, Bill may not discuss biotechnology with common street whores. That's a good idea. Anyway, stay with us. We've got a great show. Oh, my name's Alex. I think it'd be really cool to be on your city council. Uh, thing is, you gotta let me know as soon as possible because I gotta give two weeks notice at Kinko's. Hi, I'm Dale Chihuly, and I made this. I think this should explain why I should be on the city council. What do you mean you don't get it? I'm a genius. You know how much this is worth? 45,000, wait, wait a minute. 60, $60,000, that's how much this is worth. It's time once again for the Holiday Blast Game, the fun time game show for victims of Seattle's worst storm in 50 years. The Holiday Blast Game is brought to you by the Missing Flashlight Council <laughs> and by Ant Hill's Hide-A-Bed. When guests stay unexpectedly, let them sleep on an Ant Hill. And by the Association of Cranky Hardware Store Owners, where we say, hold your horses, I've got a million people in here. Now here's the star of our show, Snap Andrews. Thank you, thank you everybody. Hi and welcome 
Welcome to the Holiday Blast Game. Our contestants today are Robert from Shoreline, who lost his 94 Taurus in a giant sinkhole, and Ted from West Seattle, whose basement is flooded with raw sewage. Okay, are you ready to play? Yep. Yeah. Okay, here's your first question. And remember, the contestant who comes the closest to the correct answer without going over is the winner. How much snow did we get? An S load? An F load? An F and N's load? Or up to F and here? Robert? An S load. And Ted? An F and S load. I'm sorry, the actual answer is up to F and here. So, Ted, however, you were the closest step forward now and get ready to play the box of slogans. Oh, I hate this one. No, this is going to be fun. A lot of fun. Okay, now, as you know, many of the Seattle television stations came up with their own slogans for the big storm. Your job is to match the station with the slogan. Are you ready? Go. Yeah, okay. King 5. Holiday Blast. Good. Cairo 7. Wapplers Wet Dream, that's right. KCTS Channel 9. Send More Money. KCPQ Channel 13. When Snow Attacks, good. And Cable Channel 29, Public Access Television. Snow Killed Kurt Cobain, that's absolutely right. Very good, very good. Nicely done. Okay, now for the next question. This is a Duraflame log. Manufacturers suggested retail price is $2.95. But what was the price you paid when you went to buy it during the storm? <laughs> Ted? $10. And Robert? $27. Both of you incorrect. The correct price, actually, $135. <laughs> Robert, you were the closest that time, so step forward because it's time to play Who Gets the Chains? Now, this is the last box of chains in the store. You are the store manager. Who do you give the chains to? Delmer, your cousin who was first in line and you owe a favor to. Jason, a good kid but kind of slow. Or Stacy, a college girl new to the neighborhood. Now remember, you're the store manager. What do you say? Delmer, you were first in line, so you get the chains. Ah, no. No, 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 I'm sorry. The correct response was, sorry, we're out of chains and we're closing right now. Stacy, would you help me lock up? <laughs> That was what we were looking for, actually. Sorry, Robert, but it is time now for the lightning round. Answer these questions as fast as you can, and here we go. What did the children in your house use as a sled? Aluminum siding, pride from the house, says Ted. And Robert says, younger brother. Ten points for Robert in that case. Next question, what safety precaution backfired? Robert, lit Coleman stove in house and made family pass out. Ted, went to bed with pocket warmer and it made me pee. Okay, that's Ken for Ted. And finally, complete this sentence. The storm was so bad, to get to work, I had to drive through, Ted, a foot of standing water, and Robert, Bothell. <laughs> that is 10 more points for Robert. Boy, I'll tell you, this is a very close game, and now it is time for the fill in the blank challenge. Now, as you know, most people in Seattle told the same boring story about the storm when they all got back to work after the holidays. Here is that story. Now you fill in the blanks. Ready, Robert? Go. Uh, I'm ass deep in the friggin' slush when I hear my wife... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that's not right. Ted, give it a try. I'm ass deep in the friggin' slush when I hear whoosh-bam, so I look and the friggin' carport is toast. That's right! Congratulations, Ted! You are our grand prize winner! have just won a beautiful waterfront home for yourself on Perkins Lane in Magnolia. Congratulations. That's it for the game. Thanks for joining us. So long, everybody. Yeah, uh, I, I want to be on the city council because then I'd be the only guy on the city council made entirely of wood. Well, I might as well be on the city council, you know, because, you know, by law, for the next 22 months, I'm not allowed to go into any establishment that serves alcohol. And, you know, oh, also, I'm not supposed to go within 500 yards of this woman, you know. So what the hell else am I supposed to do? <laughs> oh, I, so I'd really appreciate your vote. This 
is the late report. Well, Gary Locke made one final sweep of the county as King County Executive on Wednesday, visiting the Burien Police Precinct, Kentwood High School, and Renton's wastewater treatment plant. Locke says he enjoyed the tour, calling it my one last look at all those icky places. <laughs> With hundreds of real emergencies during the December snowstorm, emergency, emergency 911 operators actually got calls from people asking questions like, now that the holidays are over, what should I do with my Christmas tree? Operators said they had no problem telling people exactly what to do with their tree. <laughs> Pine Street in front of the Westlake Mall was open to traffic on Monday after being closed for several years. However, to keep traffic speeds down, the city has made a speed bump out of the steel drum band that played in front of an artist. <laughs> New channel assignments for TCI Cable started Monday after being delayed for one week. A spokesperson for TCI said they could not do the entire switch until every TCI customer sat and waited at home between the hours of 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. <laughs> Former Senator Bob Packwood has a new business called Sunshine Research. It'll deal with lobbying in Congress for clients in the areas of taxation, trade, communication, and fondling. <laughs> Local officials say the holiday storm could cause problems for years to come, including a possible infestation of bark beetles. However, from a different perspective, the headline of the new issue of the Bark Beetle Gazette reads, Holiday Storm, Greatest Thing That Ever Happened. <laughs> The majority of King County Superior Court jurors voted to acquit a Seattle man who said that he grew marijuana as a medical necessity for pain resulting from an accident. The jury ruled in the man's favor after they sampled the evidence. <laughs> the Point Defiance Zoo is looking for more dangerous elephants to train as part of a new program. The name of the, pro uh, of the project is Adopt a Mad Stampeding Elephant. <laughs> A Superior Court judge was charged earlier this week with shoplifting. Apparently, security cameras caught the judge in the act, and I think we have a copy of that tape. <laughs> Finally, the internationally known Herb Farm restaurant in Falls City burned to the ground this week. Firemen arrived on the scene minutes after the fire was, uh, was reported, but were turned away because they did not have reservations. <laughs> this has been The Late Report. Thank you. I think we should have a strong voice in the city council. And I would like to be that voice. <laughs> if it'd be okay. <laughs> Thank you. What week this week? Brought to you by Seattle recording artist, Goodness. Lame. When there's something floating in your mouth just where you're gonna drink, so you turn the glass, but the thing stays right there at the front. Lame, 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 lame. 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 The Cabbage Patch dolls are now eating children. Completely beyond yeah, lame. Absolutely. I mean, don't even question me about lame. it. Lame. Pop tulips, lame. Yes. If you don't push the buttons on the phone in exactly the right order, you end up talking to a completely different person! <laughs> Beer that tells you when it was born! <laughs> they keep saying Sinatra's fine, but every time you turn around, he's back in the hospital! <laughs> There are five new bands in Seattle called Sinkhole! <laughs> this has been The Lane. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. This looks good. I always love being... Yo, go, throw it to me, Chad. Throw it. Throw it. There. 
Hey, just in time. Gosh, look at that. And we know it's after Christmas, but we're happy to be back. And, you know, if you probably have to make up some, you know, makeup gifts, just call for the Almost Live's greatest hits. It's the ultimate stocking stuffer. But now that your stockings have been stuffed, it's like a stocking unstuffer. And maybe somebody, you know, you gave someone something that wasn't as good as what they gave you. You give them one of these. See, it sort of, it works out. Anyway, we're very happy to be back. We're glad that everybody dug out and that all the slush is gone. And we're just looking forward to seeing you next week. So bye-bye and we'll see you. it more than twice. No, I didn't. Honey, I think it's flooded. Where do you get this stupid truck from anyway? Gee, my knees.